Hello and welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to give you a short tutorial uh, for anyone who owns a DNA powered mod, right? Could be a, no, not DNA 40, but a DNA 75, um, a DNA 200, 250. Uh, you would definitely want to watch this very short video. I don't want to be too technical because it gets scary when it gets, you know, way too technical. But basically, I'm going to show you the simple stuff that you can do with eScribe, which is the companion software for your DNA uh, powered mod. And it's just very simple stuff. Connect to eScribe and do some of the simple tips. Very important to get the best performance from your DNA mod. <laughs> Alright guys, so first of all, um, I'm a Mac user and eScribe only works on Windows. So what I'm going to show you is me booting up Windows on my Mac um, using Parallels Desktop and <laughs> I have a Windows Windows 7, alright? I know, yeah, it's Windows 10, 10, 11, 12, now, I don't know, I don't care. Ever since I used Mac, like, seven years ago, I never looked back to Windows, but I do have it, because some applications only run on Windows, like the eScribe software, for example. So don't be surprised, Windows 7 is what I have, and that's why I'm going to show you my tutorials. My tutorial is going to be based on Windows 7, so I'm not sure if there are any differences if you're using Windows 8, 9, 10, I don't know. Is there Windows 8? Windows 9? So first of all, if you have a DNA powered mod, you'd want to download the eScribe software. Download the eScribe software and uh, install it onto your computer. Again, it's only for Windows uh, computers only. You can do that by searching on Google download eScribe And then you can use the search results to actually download the eScribe software. It's a .exe format. Uh, download it, install it onto your Windows platform. All right. And then uh, after you've installed the software itself, you can click on the icon to open it up. And that's where we have all this interesting stuff to do. So you want to make sure that your device uh, is connected via USB cable to your computer and of course it has a battery inside all right so the first time you plug in your device it will probably uh, Windows will probably start installing the driver software uh, for your device all right so just let it go on it probably says installing device driver software and just let it go on and it should be able to install the device for you uh, install the drivers for you automatically and then a screen will pop up you have pop up there and showing you your device name you can click on rename to rename the device which is always something that I love to do it makes it easier for me because I have so many DNA mods click OK and then click OK again and now eScribe starts to download your current settings from your mod so once it's downloaded and then you'll be able to see all the other eScribe stuff here, right? I'm not going to go through all the technical stuff, just the simple stuff you need to get started, right? So first thing, you probably notice a date there and says a date is available. Click here to apply it to your device. That's actually a service pack that you can apply to your mod. So click OK and then it says please wait, applying service pack. Now, this is the basic thing you can do if you do not want to do anything else I mentioned in this video. You just got to make sure that the software, uh, your Evolve software on your mod is the latest and you apply any existing service pack. Right? Service pack applied. Then you just click OK. Just by applying service pack, you can really improve the performance uh, of your DNA device itself. Sometimes you get prompted uh, that's a message like this, a service pack for eScribe is available download it and then you click yes right you can, you can you can see the information right there the version and then you just click yes right now this happens if let's say you have uh, downloaded eScribe before a long time ago and it, when you downloaded it the patch itself or the service pack was not within the software so it automatically detects if you need a service pack prompts you you just download it and then you apply it again 
So you can see the download progress and then just click apply to apply the service pack. All right, click OK. And that's it. The service pack has been applied. Now a few more things that you can do right here. Uh, you can just browse through the profile names. Uh, just get an idea of uh, the profiles that you have on your device. And um, it comes a certain way by default from Evolve. But this thing can be customized by the mod maker or the company that made the mod. Some of them do customize it some don't right so you can click get information here to get information about your mod that open up a browser window shows you for example the serial number and the production history so you can see actually when uh, this bot the evolved bot on your mod was actually uh, was actually programmed this is useful if you buy device used and you want to see when it was made and you can click on team and then you can check out the current team. So one of the important things I like to do is I like to change the, the loading screen here or the logo, right? But uh, before I do that, I want to save the existing one. So I'll click save here to save the existing uh, logo. And then I can go ahead and click load. And then I can load my own logo. Uh, I have saved the old one, of course. And then I can go and... Uh, upload or I can actually go and use my own logo and this is how the rest of the screen looks like and and these are all the other settings that you can customize so everything you see here is an image you can ignore it uh, now the next thing I would like to do is I would like to go to the uh, look and feel part and change the watt press increment see by default it's 0.1 watt but you know for a 200 watt device you probably don't need a 0.1 watt increment anyway. So I like to change it to 0.5, right? And you can even change the temperature increment. If you do, if you don't want uh, the temperature increments to be 10 degrees, you can change it to whatever you want. Next, you can change the LED color. So if your mod is, for example, red and the LED color is blue, you want to change it to red, you can just go ahead and change it here. Uh, next, you can also click on materials and you can see what are available materials already programmed into your mod, into your mod. And that appears on the right, materials on device. And if some of the materials here have been, for example, this one, I get the titanium uh, wire. I may want to save that material in case I just want to load it and use it on a different mod. But this is purely optional, right? You can just ignore this and just use the available materials uh, for your mod. So next you can click on a screen right here and you can change the orientation from left to right, right? So you cannot do this uh, from the mod itself, uh, but you can change the orientation right here, right or left, depends if you're right-handed or, or left-handed, and you can change what appears on your screen. So these are the default stuff that appears on your screen, ohms, volta voltage, temperature, and in power mode, it is um, ohms and voltage and temperature also for this mod, for example. So obviously in power control mode, I don't need to see the temperature for whatever reason, right? So I can change it to something that actually is going to make sense and at least provide some useful information for me, right? So I'm going to change it to, let's say, puff count if I want to. Uh, so there are a lot of, lots of things here that you can change. Lots of information actually captured by eScribe itself. Uh, that you may not know existed, right? You can set the brightness here, okay? The firing button, you can set it to uh, dim out the LED if you want, and then you can look at the other options here if you want to, after firing, whether you want to activate the screen, etc, 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 okay? Uh, idle time as well is very, very useful, so if you find that the mod uh, just becomes idle way too fast, you can change it. Then, when you're done, just click on Upload Settings to device and you'll see a pop-up there that shows the progress the progress and all the changes that you just made now will be uploaded to your DNA mod and you're done right so that's how easy it is to do the basic settings then remember to click on disconnect to disconnect your mod then you can connect a different mod and configure it however you want to just change the basic basic stuff 
Right, so there you go. That was the basic um, eScribe tutorials for you. Basically, it's just connecting eScribe and making sure that if there's any patch that is needed for your device, just apply the patch, right? Apply the patch and you'll see a lot of um, difference. It really depends on what the patch is and what kind of uh, a DNA chip that you have, right? Uh, and the other thing is for the logo itself. So for the logo, I, I have my own logo now, which I, I use on all my DNA devices. It's not that difficult to create the logo itself. There are tutorials online and there's a specific size and format uh, for the logo. So you just do it in uh, a, a monotone black and white logo. Convert any of your logo into just monotone black and white. Make it in the correct dimensions, which I will put in the description box of this video. And then you're done and you have this logo that you can use on all your DNA mods. But remember, as I showed you in the, in the uh, screen earlier, to save the manufacturer logo, right? Save the manufacturer logo. Because if you don't save the manufacturer logo and you override with yours, your, your own logo, then if you want to restore it later, it will be impossible to do that. Now, let's take an example for DNA 75 mod, right? I have lots of DNA 75 mods. And uh, so, I've actually tested this before. I got a brand new DNA 75 mod. I put an RDA on it. I fire it up. Battery is freshly charged within like two three minutes uh, i get a weak battery warning weak battery weak battery and it just does not want to give me the power that i set uh, now the dna 75 board has an uh, voltage limit but my 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 setup was nowhere near a voltage limit and you probably have this issue with your dna 75 mods as well uh, so I, I i had that warning and then i immediately plugged it into eScribe. Just did whatever I showed you before, uh, let the driver install, and then uh, apply the patch. There was a patch, apply the patch, disconnect it, uh, sorry, apply the patch, upload settings to device, and then disconnect the mod. I used it, and the problem is just gone, just like that. No more weak battery warning until the battery was really actually weak. So just a very simple thing, helped me to get much better performance uh, from my DNA 75 mods. Not all patches are going to be major, some are just minor, you probably live without it. But it's just good to, when you get a new DNA mod, connect it to eScribe, see if there's a patch available, update the patch, and then you're good to go. And if you want to change the screen position, the wattage increment, etc is very very simple stuff you don't have to be like paranoid with eScribe it's not going to mess up your settings just don't don't go into the settings about the materials or stuff like that if you don't know what you're doing uh, and you should be fine the, the simple stuff changing LED color wattage increment uploading your logo etc is really really easy to do it's not as intimidating as you think it is so I do recommend that you connect, connect, connect to eScribe and do that shit that I just showed you. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Thumbs up, subscribe, and of course, leave your comments. Wokey dokey, no more smoky. <laughs>